so I have this picture right here and you can find it on Instagram. It's from November 2nd, 2022. And that was the day where I got diagnosed with a stage two brain tumor. Sounds weird, but it's true. Um, I have a picture here. Uh, you can find all of them on, on my Instagram. It's bad to show them here. It's me with like an oxygen mask uh, a couple of days prior, October 29th, where I thought I can fix my condition. Um, so the story is, I um, I was in Bali at the moment uh, when everything happened. So basically, I sold my company. Um, I had a very successful company, and I sold it in June of 2022. All right, so I sold it, and I thought, now I'm living life. I just retired. I'm 24. I'm just living life. Everything is nice and perfect, right? Well, it was for like three, four months. So basically, um, my best friend said, hey, Marvin, um, I want to travel the world. Let's go to Bali at first, right? And I was like, ah, I don't really want to go to Bali. It's like an island. I'm not like an island guy, whatever. I like cities mostly. And I was like, no, I'm not coming. And he was like, no, no, no. So you went alone first. And he had some business partners there, whatever. So you went to Bali alone and sent me some pictures. And he made me jealous. He was like, come here, come here, come here. And since I had nothing to do in Germany anymore, because I was in Germany at the time, I was like, well, screw it. I'm not working anymore. I'm retired now. It's getting kind of boring here in Germany. I'll just go to Bali and see how it is. Like, I just book a one-way ticket and I just go with the flow, basically. So uh, I like Bali quite a bit, actually. It's a very nice place uh, to be in. Mm. And that was in probably, so in June, was in August, all right? So end of August, I arrived in Bali. We had like one month of basically paradise. Since I wasn't working, I was just enjoying the island, just traveling back and forth, having a good time with friends that I met here. And everything was very good. And I would say about a month after, I had the idea of uh, getting a burger at night. And there's a burger place here called Dang Burgers. I remember it. I actually went there like four to eight weeks ago because I'm in Bali again right now uh, just to see the place again. And basically, I walked there because uh, it was right across from my villa. And on the way back, I had the burger in my hand. I remember it's like a dark alley that you have to go through. And I looked down on my phone to turn on the flashlight because you cannot see anything. And when I walked, looked down, I remember like, I was like, man, like something happened. Like I felt dizzy at the moment. I was like, huh, that's weird. And a couple minutes after, um, I still felt dizzy. It was like I was drunk a little bit. And you have to know, I don't drink alcohol. Like I used to drink when I was like young and naive. <laughs> uh, so it was like 16, 18, whatever. But I pretty much just stopped drinking at like, 18 I would say and I haven't been drunk in at least now nine years or whatever like drunk drunk maybe eight years or whatever but so I know how it feels and I felt drunk again I was like I didn't drink anything like something's going on so I was like okay I'm not going to the doctor because like whatever it's gonna go away anyways like uh, naturally so I woke up the next day the next day the week after two weeks after and it just got worse like my condition got worse. I had this dizziness and also had a headache. Like from one to 10, like a scale was probably like a two to three. So it was just like an annoying headache. It wasn't really bothering me. It's just annoying. And then after 60 days of being in Bali, I had to do like a visa run. It's basically, I went to Singapore and back uh, for like a single day. Just get your passport stamp that you're out of the country and then you can come back. So I did that. And when I went back or when I came back from Singapore, I felt like a truck hit me. It was bad. Like the headache went from a two to three to like a 12. So I always had strong headaches in the past, but the headache that I had in that moment or in the days to come or the weeks to come, it was on a completely different level, like completely insane. Next to that, my dizziness got worse. I was like, okay, this just feels weird. Let me go to the doctor. The problem is I don't like going to the doctors because in my opinion, doctors are just... Not really useful. They try to handle the symptoms by giving you medicine that they get money for, but they don't really cure the cause. And that's why I don't like going to the doctors. Everyone is different. You don't have to like my opinion, whatever. That's just my opinion, all right? Mm. And that opinion actually got worse after being diagnosed. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. So basically, um, Everything got worse and I went everywhere. Like I did research online. I did cold therapy, hot therapy, saunas. I did 
uh, acupuncture, I did massages, I went to chiropractic, I did everything, all right? Uh, nothing helped though. Like it got worse and worse and worse. And I would say it was in October, probably. Um, at some point, it was like one morning I woke up and I started throwing up. I was like, that's weird. So I felt just even worse. I was throwing up at a, at a certain time, like every morning. And then it got to like from throwing up once to like 12 times a day. Like in the end, I was like, this is really messed up. Next to throwing up, I started losing control of my complete left side, meaning especially my fingers and my left foot were, were like um, like handicapped kind of, meaning if I tried to do anything like like that was in fine motion, basically like this, for example, my fingers would go like up and down. Like I couldn't control my fingers anymore. Like I couldn't keep them like in a relaxed state like that. It was just like, like I lost motion basically. And I was like, that was freaking me out. And then a couple of weeks after, and that was like end of October, um, I started seeing everything double. And that's when I got really freaked out. I was just sleeping like 16 hours a day. I was barely working again. And it was just like, oh, what's going on? And I did some research online and I have some screenshots of me sending WhatsApp messages because I was about to form a company in Dubai um, for tax reasons. And I said like, because you need a medical test to go to Dubai. And the company that I wanted to do the setup with, uh, I told that guy, I have the message still. It was like October 27th. Like, hey, look, I cannot do this right now. I think I have a brain tumor because I did some research already. Um, so let's please postpone this. And he was like, oh, I wish you all the best. I'm sorry, whatever. And at that time, it was November 1st. I have the dates in mind because obviously it was a big event in my life. November 1st, I called, um, I have two best friends. One was with me in Bali. The other one was still in Germany. I called him because... His now ex fiance is a nurse. So I was like, hey, can I talk to her? And he was like, yeah, of course. So I talked to her and I told her all my symptoms. And she was like, well, do yourself a favor and come back tomorrow. Like, come to Germany. You, you're in serious trouble. And I was like, okay, whatever. Um, but when, like, that freaked me out. I was like, ah, there must be something too. Because she knew I liked it here. She knew I didn't want to go. But if she told me, like, come back, it's urgent. I knew, okay, I had to go. Booked the flight the next day. I was, was it November? Yeah, it was that, what, same day, actually. I don't quite remember. So November 1st, I arrived on November 2nd. That's about it. And it's like a 16-hour flight. So maybe I booked the ticket like early on November 1st, whatever. Mm. And the problem is flying with a brain tumor is extremely dangerous because as far as I know, I'm not a doctor, obviously, but I had the brain tumor for like a year already. And the problem is I got the brain tumor without knowing it. So I didn't have any symptoms. But once you step on the plane with a brain tumor, it develops like a bubble on top of it. And that bubble takes away space in your brain. And because space is being taken away from the brain, you get symptoms. And because my uh, tumor was like in the back of my head, um, it affected like my fine motion. And that's why I got the headaches and all of these symptoms with the left side and all, of, all that fun stuff, whatever. So... Since I knew I had a brain tumor already, or like the assumption at least, um, I knew that flying with a brain tumor was extremely dangerous now. But I was like, okay, what are my options? Getting in a getting in surgery without any insurance in Indonesia, it's like a third world country, or going back to Germany, taking the risk, and then having good medical care, you know, because I still had insurance in Germany. I was like, okay, I'll take the second option. I'll fly back to Germany. So Germany, like 16-hour flight, uh, was... Indonesia, Turkey, Turkey, Germany, I believe. And uh, I arrived in Germany November 2nd and like outside early afternoon. And my aunt picked me up because I uh, invited my mom on vacation. So I just sent her on vacation like a week prior or whatever to Turkey with her boyfriend. Uh, so my mom wasn't there. My dad was a truck driver at that time. Uh, so he also wasn't in town. So he also couldn't pick me up. But my aunt was there. So my aunt picked me up and took me straight to the hospital. So I had all my luggage with me, boom, went straight to the hospital and to like the emergency room. And at first they wanted to send me home. I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. Like I have all these symptoms. They're like, yeah, take a rest, whatever. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I have this thing here. And it's because my best friend's ex-fiance basically said like, hey, close your eyes and go like this. All right. And I did that. And I was like all over the place. Because my motion, like my sense of motion is just all messed up. And that's usually an indicator for, hey, you have a brain tumor. And then the doctor was like, oh, okay, uh, let's, let's do an MRI of your head. So I got a scan, basically. 
Mm. And I believe they pulled me out of that scan after like 10 minutes and it's like a 20 minute scan. Three doctors come rushing in and I saw like the look on their face and was like, uh, if a doctor feels bad for you, you know, you're like, you're, you're in deep trouble. So they were like, hey, look, um, we're going to give it to you straight. Uh, you have a brain tumor and you need immediate surgery. The way it looks, you should have been dead like three times already. I'm not sure. Are you still like, are you still able to walk? Are you able to like get on the plane? Like, we're not sure how it works. You need immediate surgery. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> but I was prepared because I kind of knew I had a brain tumor already. Um, so I was prepared. I was quite calm, I guess. I had some tears in my eyes, but I was still quite calm. And I had to make the calls because I wasn't on the hospital. My aunt left already um, because I w had to wait like a long time. And I called my mom, called my dad, called my best friends. I was like, hey, guys, look, um, I have this thing. Please take care of everything. Um, I need to focus on the surgery now. Um, so the surgery was supposed to happen the same day, um, but they couldn't fit me in because my surgery was a bit complicated. Um, so they couldn't fit me in like right away. So I had to wait one night. Next morning, I think it was like, no, next afternoon at like 2 p.m. They pulled me out and I went straight into the surgery. I couldn't like text anyone. They just pulled me out of my room. Boom, go in. I was like, all right. So my dad came to the hospital. I remember it. He was like walking to my room and he was like, hey, where's my son? They were like, he's in the surgery right now. He's like, oh, that's interesting. Um, so after the surgery, I woke up and I was completely blind on my left side. And it was painful. I was like, what's going on? So what happened was you get it once you have, if you have a brain tumor like I had, um, they do the surgery with you face down pretty much uh, because they cut open like the back of your head. I have like a scar like that. It's quite big. And um, you also see it on Instagram if you just, uh, if you're interested in that, that weird stuff, whatever. And they use the contextual spray or like a liquid, whatever, to make sure everything is safe. And that liquid got into my eye and it burned my eye pretty much with alcohol because it contains alcohol. So I was blind for like three di days on my left side and I was completely freaked out when I woke up. I was like, no, something went wrong. I'm blind now. Well, turns out I'm not. And here's where things got interesting because uh, in between me being diagnosed and me actually um, like having the surgery, I got to reflect on life. And I had three things that I thought, okay, these are like very, very good life lessons that I um, that I got to experience very early in life because I was 24 at that time and most people don't have the chance to reflect on their life in a serious manner um, at that young of an age. And the first life lesson that I had is I actually want to start a family. So up until then, I did everything that I ever wanted in my life. I grew up very poor and I made it out and I'm like one of these rags to riches stories. So I was well off and in shell. I was like, Okay, I got that part like safe. I have amazing friends. I have an amazing life. I travel the world. Everything is perfect. The only thing that I'm still missing is I want to start a family. So that was one of the things that I said, okay, once I'm out of here, I want to focus on that part in my life. Second part was um, you actually notice quite well and quite easily who your true friends are in these moments. Who sticks up like to you? Who's with you? Who's supporting you? Who actually goes to the hospital and visits you if you're doing fine or not you know and um yeah that was a tough lesson because you lose some friends basically um and the third lesson was that i actually want to start another company again um because retirement believe it or not is actually quite boring for a 24 now i'm 25 it's gonna be 26 year old it's man and i can only speak for man because i'm not a woman a man is supposed to work, in my opinion. We're supposed to have something that gets us going in the morning and that keeps us busy. So I noticed like retirement isn't really my thing, but I need to find a company that I actually feel good with. Like I want to start something new that has sub substance that does amazingly well um, and that does actually good service. And it's now one and a half years later and now I'm finally starting um, a company that I feel extremely good with which is called Rectifcart. Uh, Rectifcart.io is basically my new project that I started. And it's in, the, in its essence, it's a combination of software, marketing, or like media buying automations and marketing frameworks. And with Rectifcart, we can guarantee leads for less than $10 each. And that's 100% guaranteed or you don't pay for agency owners, for coaches and online service providers. It's literally such a good thing. I've tested it with 
so much ad spend, it works. I have clients that I'm doing some consulting for here and there, and I, I gave them the whole solution. I gave them Reactive Card, and it works gangbusters. So um, I'm really proud to announce that Reactive Card is just starting right now. Um, it may have launched already, depending on when you're seeing this video. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud to announce that. That was one of the, that was one of a, that was a good life lesson because now I'm back to working with a project that I'm very passionate about. Uh, it feels very good. The results that we're getting for our clients is they are amazing for the beta testers that we have right now. Um, so yeah, if you're interested in that, you can obviously check it out. But other than that, it's, um, I have like a link in the description. Other than that, it's, it was a pretty good experience because, uh, it taught me many life lessons that I wouldn't have gotten otherwise. So yeah, um, like this video, subscribe it, send it to someone. I don't know what you want to do with it. Um, comment something down below. And I want to thank you for watching this video. Check out my other videos. I have some uh, videos about like marketing and stuff here on my channel. So yeah, check it out. And I want to thank you for watching this video, this video and I'll see you on the next one.